Hello everyone, we'd like to welcome you to today's version 6 Bernina Embroidery Software webinar. Our presenter is Judy Hayner and I'll turn the program over to her at this time. Judy? Thank you, Elva. Welcome everyone. We're going to do a little bit of plan around in the Embroidery Software 6 today and our main uh, component of embroidery designs is going to be from a collection called To the Letter. So there comes our title for our webinar today, which is Take It to the Letter. Lettering um, can be a, a many different things. It could be phrases. It can be names and initials. It really does allow you to add a very personal touch to all of your projects, turning them into, uh, could be a treasured keepsake, an heirloom. Um, the thing about it is we're going to work with some basic tools that are going to help us be very successful with aligning designs, aligning letters, uh, putting things together in a very quick and easy fashion. We're going to use this fresh and fun embroidery collection called To the Letter and uh, use it to do some neat personalization of, um, well, it could be a, a home deck project, it could be a piece of clothing, maybe it's a piece of artwork. So there's a lot of different things that we can do with that. We'll explore a few things um, today, and as we're getting closer to the holiday season, it might spark your creativity for customizing some gifts and adding a little extra flair to some of them, and it'll it be a very simple process for you. This new collection available at your local Bernina dealer is called To the Letter. It's a beautiful collection of uh, alphabets, a complete alphabet. Each one of them is a little different in um, the textures and the flourishes or the uh, extra little embellishment that's been added to that particular alphabet. Um, there's a lot of accent pieces, and it does also include some mixed media printable artwork, which gives you the opportunity to do mixed media composition, or perhaps print this uh, printable artwork onto uh, transfer paper and then iron it. So you've got a lot of different ways that you can use uh, this collection to create some very fun and festive even um, projects. Now, uh, here's just a look at a few of those uh, pieces that come with the collection. Uh, as I said before, each one of the letters is very unique, and no two look the same, of course, unless you're using the same letter twice. And then the accent pieces, there's quite a variety of whimsical, along with ones that add a little bit of movement and swirl, and then our, our flower motif. The printable artwork um, gives you some variety to add some unique things as well. And these could also be used um, and brought into uh, Art Canvas to do some other unique mixed media items uh, within our embroidery software and the projects that we want to create. So making it fresh and fun is going to be very attainable when we combine it with software. We're going to use some very basic software tools today. And, you know, for the most part, that's what most of us want to do with our software. It helps us get to point A and Z a lot faster. And so we'll, we'll use selection tools. That's pretty much a given. We're going to talk about how you um, center the hoop or uh, get, give yourself the ability to manually place things in the hoop without everything automatically centering. Some of you, that might be new. Some of you, it'll be, oh, I do that all the time. So that will be your refresher. We have alignment tools, moving objects around, uh, using lettering in combination with the embroidery design, and then talking a little bit about stitch types when we uh, make changes to lettering, maybe beyond the, the realm of where they should go. So the basic tools are what are going to get us to that ability to make something fresh, make something fun, and the bottom line is get it done, especially as holidays are approaching. So let's review a few basic tools we're going to use today. Uh, we'll go through the session today creating several different com compositions and giving you some options on how these tools are used. It's kind of a review, but it's really meant to allow you to see all the possibilities and how much easier your process for setting up a design can be using basic tools and a few ones you're maybe not as comfortable with yet. So there, we all move the objects around. There are several different ways to do that on screen. You can merely click on the object or the motif, design whichever word you want to call that, and click and drag it. That is the easiest way to move objects around on screen. 
Um, you can click and drag. You can also select it using selection tools. The arrow keys on your keyboard or your computer keyboard, they'll help you move those items around. Also, they're in finer increments. So we kind of use the word nudging. It helps you nudge those objects into place uh, so you can just do it little bits at a time. So it's a baby step uh, movement. And then object properties, the dialog box of object properties has an area in it called position. And you can use numeric values to get very, very precise positioning. Now that is going to be something that's a little bit of trial and error. But as you get those positions, um, you now have a numeric value to reference back to or to note for later use as well. Then the alignment tools, which are in the software, also allow movement of objects in a precise fashion, aligning them in relationship to one another. So that's kind of going to be one of our main focuses today, is how those alignment tools can help you uh, set things up so quickly without having to do a lot of nudging and a lot of moving around, they'll do it for you given uh, a few sets of reference points that we'll talk about. Now the alignment tools, where are they located? There is a toolbar at the bottom of our embroidery software screen, down in the lower left corner. And it's a toolbar which we call the Arrange toolbar. And there's several different tools down there that allow us um, to work with our designs and move them around and uh, give them a different layout. Um, the ones we're, most, we're focusing on today are the alignment tools here and the distribution tools. The other things that you'll note are grouping and ungrouping designs. We also have all of our favorite fun things of kaleidoscope and wreathing, and that allows you to quickly lay out designs. That's not our, our discussion today. That'll be another day. Um, in the uh, alignment tools, you can align things both vertically and horizontally. And then you've got different reference points that you can uh, guide onto, whether you want to align them to the left of the object, the centers of the object, or to the right edge of your object. And that's done both vertically and horizontally. The other option that we have is to align them on both center points, vertical and horizontal, at the same time. So these allow us to position things, move things very, very quickly and precisely without us having to fuss about it too much. Distribution tools are another great tool that we have for helping us space. Space out our <coughs> excuse me, objects either horizontally or vertically. And again, those are also done um, <coughs> excuse me, uh, using a using part of the uh, objects on screen as the reference point. Now, if some of you are looking at your screen or have looked at your screen and say, I don't have those distribution tools, they came out after the, the release of the software. They were something that was, um, oh, I don't remember how much time after that. But it's been a fair amount of time since this service pack has been released as well. But it's a service pack that you can download from Bernina.com. And when you install this service pack, it gives you these two new tools. So where you'll go to is, as I said, the website, Bernina.com. You will look under Support. And under that Support area, look for Bernina Embroidery Software 6 Support. And there will be a service pack 1 listed there. And you'll download that. And there are installation instructions <coughs> and notes on how to process through that. And when you install that, you will now gain the horizontal and the vertical spacing options. So if you don't have them, that's what you all need to do so that you can make life easier for yourself as well. Now, some other basic tools that are used repetitively uh, as you are working in your software is selecting the object. I referenced that before. You can either select it, draw uh, bounding boxes around it um, that allows you to to immediately grab it. And then you can also do some basic things like group your objects together or ungroup the objects so that you can work with some parts and pieces of them. Now, many of you are out there are probably seasoned within the software and have used it quite a bit. And you know these are second nature to you. Many of you probably do use shortcut keys on, in the, on the keyboard. 
for those of you who haven't ventured that way, as you get more comfortable with the software, those are things that you'll want to probably gain access to and knowledge of as well. If you've used them in other programs, they will apply here as well. Being able to use uh, shortcuts of Control G and Control U to do the same things as selecting those tools on screen. It just becomes a little bit of a time saver and it will become second nature over time. Now, we're talking about how the hoop is displayed. When we go uh, and look at that option, you'll go into the hoop, hoop layout. You'll, you'll right click on hoop and it will open up this dialog box and it will give you uh, properties and options of your hoop. Selection is one of them, displaying it is another. How the hoop is positioned around your object is another one. It, the default is to be automatically centered. So your hoop is always centered over whatever objects you have on screen. Whether you have one or many clustered together, the hoop will always be centered. Now, that's good because then it tells you uh, when it comes to stitching, what's going to be within the boundaries of your hoop. But if you're trying to set up a group of design elements or motifs, add things to the composition, that can be a hindrance because it makes you kind of, it, it moves the hoop all over the place. So either turn your hoop off, but what I find a very handy tool is to just to go in and check, I want to position the hoop manually, which means it's not going to move around. I can move the objects within the hoop area wherever I want them to be. And then in the end, I can go back and look at automatic centering to see how it fits within the hoop. So this is where you take off automatic centering and select manual. And that's what we'll do for our project today. So let's just go through a little bit of FYI on the, on the alignment tools, and then we'll get into a couple other compositions. Um, that we have suggested for you guys to use or play with uh, given this particular embroidery collection or maybe another one you may have. So if you were to select a group of letters from to the letter, and maybe they spell out the word stitch, so you'll select the S, the T, the I, the T, the C, and the H, and just position them in the hoop. Because with alignment tools, it really doesn't matter where you put them because we're going to have the tools help us line things up. Now, in this case, this is a very long word, so we went ahead and rotated it in the hoop. The other option that you have is to go into your multi-hooping option, and you can actually rotate your hoop there. So there's two ways to kind of rotate, either it's the whole hoop or it's the design itself. So once it's rotated, it allows us to look at how do we want to line things up. So we'll go into the alignment options. If we select all of the letters, <clears throat> the things to, to remember about um, the items and the objects that you're trying to align is whatever is selected last and whatever has been added last in your sequence, if you do a select all, it will align things off the last sequence item in the group. Now, if I did not want it to be aligned off the H, then I would manually have selected them. Say I wanted it to line off the S, I would manually have selected the H, held down the control key, and selected them all with the H being last. It's whatever has been brought into the hoop last, or whatever you select last in your sequence, that will be the reference point for using the alignment tool. So we are going to choose, because our letters are running vertical as they are here, once they are selected, they are going to align to the right vertically. So here we are aligning them to the right vertically. The bottom is here, so this would not be a good choice. If this were rotated and this were the bottom, you could align them through the bottom. The nice thing about the icons for alignment is it tells you exactly what it's going to do here. When you choose this one, this is where the reference is going to be. When you choose this one, this is where the reference is going to be. So we can then you know, get that, those things aligned, lined up. 
and ready to uh, what I call space, and we use the distribution tools to do that. So what we're aiming to do is space between point S and point H, basically. So to do that, whatever it is that you want to space out, you will pick the first and the last items in that sequence, and then select the tool for distribution. Now in our case, this and this, and then we can choose to space them vertically, and it will space them all out. Remember our slide before, before here. They're not spaced out. They're not aligned at all. And now with alignment to the right, we have them lined up, but we still don't have them spaced properly. So spacing them vertically allows equal distance between all the letters between S and H. So here it is in sequence. We had our letters selected. We aligned them. And then we vertically spaced them as well two very handy and useful tools to make it quick and easy to get the job done so that we can move on to the next step of whatever it is we happen to be doing with our embroidery project today. So this is going to be a great opportunity for you to take a look at this great collection. Think about lettering, personalizing your gifts and your projects, and having a lot of fun with the tools that make it so easy to have that happen. This collection is very unique in its alphabet. They're very airy and light. Um, and this is just a little bit of a sampling of a few of them, along with a few of the accent pieces that are included within the collection also. So you can really have a lot of creative freedom using this collection and the things that you have available in your software. So let's look at how we can combine and edit with the software using the to the letter A and adding some lettering. We're going to talk about um, making that alphabet larger, uh, the pros and cons of that, our limitations or suggestions, recommendations, as well as then what would you do next. So it's really easy to get started with this. We're going to open up and select the letter A out of the folder. And then we're going to select to show the hoop. And we want to go into the positioning. Um, we're going to position manually. So we want to be able to position the items in the hoop. And when we do that, we can literally then drag anything we have, and this will be our A, and move it over to the side of the hoop, and it won't automatically rebound to the center. So if any of you out there have had that problem in the past and wish it wouldn't do that, this is the way to fix that, and this is the way that it, you can make that happen. So again, we've selected A, we turned on manual position, and now we can move the alphabet A over to the left-hand side of the hoop. With it selected, we're going to open up the object properties, and we are going to increase the size of our alphabet. So we'll do it proportionately by checking this box, and we're going to increase it 150%. So really, we're increasing it 50%, because 100 is where it was at. And once that's done, uh, we're going to start adding some additional lettering. A and the B and the A. So we'll right click on the lettering icon. These are our steps. I'll show you in a screen capture here. We'll type in a capital A. We're going to choose the varsity font. We are going to change the height of the letter to 1.4 inches or it's equal to 35 millimeters. Now the reason I have both here is some of us have our computer set in inches. Some of us have ours in millimeters. Um, that's a personal choice. So here's the uh, the change in height that we have done. So you'll select OK, and then you have several ways to input that letter onto the screen. You can merely press Enter on your keyboard, or you can click on screen, and your lettering will appear. So we would go to the right, clicking on the lettering icon. We will type a capital A in our object properties box for lettering. We'll scroll through the alphabet fonts available, and we're going to go choose Varsity block cap. We will change the height to 1.4 inches. And then we will select OK and enter on screen the A. Now it's going to come up in the last color used in the design. 
and that's something we can change. And by changing that, we'll just go down to our thread colors, and it now lists all the colors that are being used in the letter A, the embroidery design, and you can choose one of your, your own choosing. I chose the darker pink. That's personal preference. And then you're ready to duplicate that letter. And there's several ways to get a duplicate. Um, one of the ways that's very easy with version 6 is uh, cloning. And you'll just merely right-click on that item you want to duplicate and drag. And now you've created a clone or a duplicate. There are other ways to make that happen. <clears throat> One could be selecting copy. After you've selected the item, selecting copy and pasting it, move it into position. You can also use shortcut keys once you've selected the object. Control C and then pasting it with Control V. So you've got some different easy shortcut ways. And I love cloning. That's one of my favorite ones um, because I'm, I've always got my ha hand on the mouse anyway. So uh, right click and drag. Then uh, we have changed the color of the second A during that process, but we need to add the last letter, which is a V. So again, we'd right-click on lettering, and we'd input a capital V. And if you'll notice, it has remembered the font that we used previously and the height, so we don't have to re-enter of that, any of that information. We just need to simply say OK, and press Enter on screen or click on screen to enter the V and then move it and position it between the A's. And I'm not going to worry about the positioning because we're using alignment tools. So I don't have to fine tune because they will take care of aligning and distributing for me. The things that you will note that I did in positioning is the A's are at the top of your embroidery A and at the bottom of your embroidery A. So that gives you your parameters for distribution and placement. Uh, you can go ahead and thread, uh, change the thread color for the last letter that we've inputted. And then it's time for us to line them up. So we would select them all and then choose to align left vertical. So we're going to align a lot along this side. This was the last one inputted. By choosing select all, it aligns off that last one in the sequence not the last one in the order, it's the last one you brought into the sequence of embroidery motifs. Then after, while they're still selected, they can be spaced vertically and it will space them between A and A. So the spacing then will be equally distributed between those two points. We only have three objects that we're working with. The last thing is talking a little bit about stitch top. Now, when we change the height of our ABA to 1.4 inches, um, many of you probably know, but some of you may have forgotten or don't know yet, that in the back of the software manual, there is an appendix. And it gives us references for each one of the built-in fonts of the software. And it has suggestions and recommendations for a maximum and a minimum height of the lettering. These are based on the capital letter or the upper case. What they're saying is between those parameters, you will have favorable results. If you go beyond those, you may not have favorable results given the fill stitch that has been selected or the shape of the alphabet. All of those things kind of factor in. With our alphabet today, what it's going to affect is the fill. Because our fill is a satin, and when you start making your letters beyond those maximum recommendations, you are lengthening out how a satin stitch forms. And we know it, it penetrates one side and then penetrates the other side, and there's a lot of thread in between with no penetration. So we're going to change the stitch type so that we can still have larger letters, but still have a nice favorable stitch out and be happy with the way they look. So we're going to go ahead and change the fill stitch type. We're changing it to a step, which will give us numerous penetration. There are different step patterns that can be um, selected, which give you a different way um, that the stitches look. And there's also a reference in the appendix for the step patterns. And you can go back and you can look at one 
through 30, how those will look when they are stitched out in threads. So that's the way where we can take a look at here is this long batten. We may have thread, thread expanses or expanses here that are going to catch on things because they're only anchored here and here. When we change it to a satin stitch, we have many anchor points or needle penetrations, so we don't have the ability for the thread to get caught on something, catch on something, get pulled. So it can be done in object properties The change can. It can also be done down here on the fill, uh, fill tab, and we would just change it to a step. You can also change it to um, a fancy fill. It all depends upon your letter type and what you're looking for, but there's a lot of different ways that you can uh, make it possible for you to use those lettering and still have a favorable stitch out. So this would be one suggestion for that. So it becomes a very fast, fun, and fresh way to put together a great personalization for um, maybe it's a gift, maybe it's a piece of artwork, uh, but this composition comes up very easily and you'll be very successful with all of those steps. Now the other thing that I wanted to share with you is um, on the Bernina.com website, there are some great tool tips that have been created that center around the tools in Embroidery Software 6. And there's one there for horizontal and vertical alignment tools. So I really recommend you take a look at, there's so many there, Amanda's done a great job creating these uh, tool tips. And they're, they're just focused, they're very um, short, and to the point of how that tool, and only that tool, will be used. So it's a great way to help you be successful with your software. You'll locate that under the Experience. If you select the Experience tab, and then go down, it's these icons here, and you're going to look for the one that is Tips, Tricks, and Tutorials right here. Once you expand that out, you're going to say, I want to do um, tool tips <clears throat> right here, and it'll say what do you want your tool tips to be in, and we want it to be in Embroidery Software 6. So then it'll come up, up with, um, this is just the first layer, and as you scroll down there's many, many more tool tips that have been created that help you um, learn or remember how those tools work when you haven't used them for a while. So I encourage you to go there and take a look at the tool tips. When you're there, you'll need to go to sewing and embroidery under experience as well because there is a free download of the letter B that is part of to the letter uh, embroidery collection for you to download and use. So once you select that, it'll show you exactly how you need to go about downloading all of those things and have it ready and available for you to be creative because B is, you know, for best friends, it can be best wishes, it can be mine. I mean, there's just a lot of neat, fun, clever things that you could create with B, even if that's not your initial. And it allows you to kind of play with one of it and see how beautifully this collection of alphabet um, embroidery designs do stitch out. So I encourage you to go to Bernina, experience, and to the free downloads and investigate that also. So let's look at how with that downloaded B you can create some very clever things. We would go ahead and open up that design in the embroidery software. And then we'll want to go into the hoop, show hoop, and go to your hoop option. Um, select the hoop of choice and take off the automatic centering and select manual. And then select OK. That will allow us to move things around in the hoop very easily. We'll right click on the lettering icon again, and we're going to type in the word, the letters L-I-S-S. -S. Scroll down in your alphabet and locate the Tiffany alphabet, and then select OK, and go ahead and enter your new letters on screen. You can use the arrow keys to fine tune your movement. You can um, select and drag into position. <clears throat> Excuse me. And then once you have it placed somewhere close to the center and snugged up fairly close to your B, select it all. Then from there, align the centers horizontally. And that allows you to put your the rest of the word in the center of the B. Now given that, you may end up like here, having it a little bit overlapped. But remember, you can select just the LIS and use your 
uh, arrow keys on the keyboard to fine tune that movement so that they're not right on top of each other. Then, um, depending upon how you're going to set it up in the hoop, you can group them together using either the shortcut key or the group icon, which is in the lower left corner of the screen, and rotate it 90 degrees counterclockwise. Or the option would be also to rotate your hoop and work with it in the other direction. So once it's, it's um, grouped together and rotated, or you have the ability then to move it into the lower <clears throat> right part of the hoop area that we're viewing here, and then we're going to add a little bit more cleverness to this thing. We're going to go in and uh, right click on the lettering key again, and we're going to add the words follow, enter, and your. You'll select center justification for those two words, close, say OK, and close the dialog box, and then enter on screen or click on screen, and then you can group those words together and position them uh, above the bliss, uh, strategically placing them. They'll be rotated as well, 90 degrees, because when they come in in this hoop orientation, they will be going this way. So you'll want to group and rotate them 90 degrees and nudge them into position. Last but not least is adding one more little accent piece. Um, this may be from the collection you now have purchased from uh, to the letter, or maybe it's another accent piece that's included within the software that you can use to add into this. And if you're using the soft, the collection, it'll be uh, accent 21004-39, and then you will fi open the, go to File and insert that design, and it will come onto the screen, and then you'll position it. So it creates a very fun saying, gives you lots of opportunities, some very basic tools, but make it look like you did a lot of work to get there because it looks like it might have taken a little while to plan this, but using those great distribution and alignment tools, it made it very simple and easy. So this is a great collection that's going to allow you a lot of flexibility, and um, you could do some really unique things with it and fine tune it for many different projects. Um, <clears throat> of course, you know the color is all dependent how it sits out is all dependent upon what thread you put in the machine. So really, your possibilities are endless. The other thing that we have coming um, out very soon to go with the collection is a mini collection uh, for the dot design works. It's a companion collection. And it will have um, monogram frames, floral swirls, retro accents, and some other um, multimedia fun that you can do with in, in conjunction with the um, embroidery, if you desire. You don't have to combine them. Just know that you'll have paint design and paintwork design and also crystal work designs that you can use uh, in your projects as well. Now there's other inspiration available for you. Again, at the Bernina website under Experience, there are more free downloads. One that does relate to this collection is very new, and it would be under the sewing and embroidery. It's um, a pad folio. It was stitched using the new 780, but many of the components can be um, replicated on other models of embroidery machines, or you'll have to get a little more creative. But this embroidery motif, as well as the alphabet, as well as um, there's some crystal design that has also been used. So fun ways to personalize things with those beautiful embroidery alphabets. And again, this is the path that you will find to download this project that is available on the Bernina website. More inspiration awaits you always in the Through the Needle Online magazine. It's really uh, filled and packed with wherever you want to go in your sewing life, whether you love sergers, whether you love software, whether you just like to load that embroidery design and stitch it out. There's lots of creative ideas packed in here, uses for accessories. Um, it's just a, a wealth of opportunities. And whether you're a home deck garment or um, love to do children's clothes, you're going to find some very uh, interesting, inspirational ideas and articles included in this free publication. All you need to do is sign up for it on Bernina.com. And by monthly, you'll receive a notice that it's ready for you to preview. And it comes in PDF, so you can download it. We always have a web accessory special. This month, it is on the number 82 eyelet attachment set for 25% off. 
And always remember, though, that this is good through the end of the month, which is November 30th, fast approaching us. And it is at participating dealers while their supply lasts. So you will have to ask your dealer if they're participating in this. And sometimes if you just show the interest, then maybe they will be participating. Um, but this collection is great. If the eyes have it, it's a very easy and beautiful way to create um, embellishment, decorative eyelets, or creative functional eyelets. And it does work on the most basic of Bernina embroidery machines. So I would investigate the possibility of uh, adding this to your stocking for, for the holidays. So here's a little look at some examples of some fun things you might do using the eyelet set. And I hope you have gotten inspired with our fresh and fun embroidery that we have done today. And I, I know I've given you a preview of this beautiful new to the letter embroidery collection. Uh, it truly does stitch out beautiful and combined with some of the great things we can do in software, it's uh, promising for you to have some great and fun projects put together and personalized as you begin uh, sewing maybe for gifts for the holidays. So at this point, Elva, are there any questions 